Hit a car. <laughs> Hit a car. <laughs> that might have to be our intro. What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Special vlog for you this time. We have David coming up from the Power Disc Golf Academy, Texas all the way to Charlotte just to be with me. We're gonna get some field work in. We're gonna go through some things that I'm working on, some of the things that I've been going through the last couple months, and then moving forward like a plan of action for me to get better. Also, what's going on with the Academy, big things. You guys are awesome. Things are going great. Great feedback, we'll go through a bunch of that stuff, but uh, yeah, let's just get right into some field work action. I wanted to take you guys kind of through what's going through my mind and how I want to improve. And this is kind of a level up of thinking, not tutorial type stuff, but how does a professional get better? Especially somebody like me who's, I've been struggling for about a year and a half to compete at the highest level, still competing pretty well, but I need to get over that little, whatever that hump is. And so I'm gonna be going through that with you guys on how I'm kind of navigating that situation. So today, I'm gonna to be working on a specific shot. So over the past, like I said, year and a half, two years, I've been struggling to score at the highest level. I've had some, some peaks of, of playing really well, but for the most part, I've been missing the cut at a, at a few of these events, and it's really kind of gotten me into a place of, all right, I gotta figure this out. I gotta like diagnose what the problem is. And so what I've done is I've gone back to like when I was playing really well, what was I doing then that is different from now? But the one thing that I noticed was I was really good at throwing the disc from left to right with like a stable faster disc. That was what I was like really good at. And that's like a simple little shot, but then when I really dove into like that kind of thought of like, okay, why was I doing that and I'm not that good at that, that specific shot now, how does that translate into better play there or then than now? And what I came up with was when you throw a disc from left to right, especially a fast, stable disc, what's happening is the disc is landing soft. And so I'm able to then navigate longer holes with out of bounds, let's say right and left, and landing the disc soft, that means that I'm not taking a lot of OB strokes. If you look at my statistics now, I throw at OB more than almost anybody. You look at now, every shot that you throw on tour is deep. Out of bounds left, out of bounds right. So if you're throwing at OB a lot, high rate like I am doing, you're not gonna score well. When throwing from left to right, you can navigate the fairway more and the disc runs out of energy because the stability it's coming out and it's going to run out of the energy at the end to where when it lifts turns over it's going to have a lot going left because of the highs of flip the way that that works so today it's a long story for what we're going to work on today i i want to for the next week before i play nashville i want to get that shot back to where i'm drifting everything every single shot from left to right which means all my shots, whether they're understable, overstable, I want them to start off in ante and land straight and soft. If I can do that, I'm gonna relearn that shot. That's the correlation that I wanna test out to see if that's why I'm not playing that good. Left to right shot, big problem that I'm having right now when I throw that shot, it's coming nose up and I'm not getting over, it's going left. So when I have to throw that, I'm throwing it out of bounds. So let's work on it. So David and I, he's gonna join me in this process. I'm gonna start off with putters, or we are. I'm going to try to take them from left to right, land them soft, close to this line. Then I'm gonna to go to mid ranges, all stabilities, which means this is important too, because as I throw, let's say a very understable disc, I have to down tempo. So I can't throw that hard, right. otherwise it'll flip, roll. And then I really have to be in control of that release point and that angle in order for it to land soft. So it might not go as far, but I have to learn those discs again all the way up to my most stable discs so I can learn how to land all these soft and for them to be out of energy at the end. 
I'm gonna watch you first. Okay. <sighs> and the other thing is when you're doing field work like this, <coughs> you really want to, you don't want to register as, okay, that's a bad shot. We want to be really simple in this process. Did my disc come out on Anheuser? Did it land flat? That's what I'm working on right now because obviously I'm not accurate. Right. So let's start off with putting it on Anheuser, landing it flat. If I get close to the line, good. If not, who cares? As long as it's on the Anheuser and it's landing flat, those are our two main objectives. All right. Because with practice, over a long period of time of me practicing the shot, I'm going to get more accurate. See how it landed on Heiser? Right. Not good. We Not good, okay. So we want to, okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, now that I have that going, and I know I have control in order to land it soft, I could take a disc more stable, and now I can try to get a little bit more flight out of it, which means I'm able to throw it on the Anheuser and let it come out a little bit, but because it's in Anheuser the whole time from start to finish almost, even if it does come out, which I want this one too, it shouldn't move a lot because the energy is out of it already. Okay. See, now watch it come back. And now I get that swing. And just with 20 shots, all of a sudden, I have complete control over a 440 straight shot. Right. And that, the only reason I was able to know I could throw that shot right there is because I just practiced it 40 times. Right. All right, we just got back from the field. We did a bunch of field work. Now we're at Eager Beaver. The Eager Beaver. We're gonna throw some uh, left to right shots, work on the course, what we worked on over there. It's gonna be a little different though. Shorter holes, tighter fairways, see if we can stay in control. All that stuff that we were doing in the field, that's in our lesson plan too at the Power Disc Golf Academy. Uh, we just got done launching fully, right? Yep. Our official launch date is, well, by the time you guys see this, it'll be after April 1st, right. so we'll officially launch by then but we had t over 2,500 people to sign up during the pre-launch. Yeah. 2,500 people and we've already released 75 lessons and we still got about 30 or 40 more to release and that's from the, what we filmed earlier this year. Yep. And then we're gonna film more over the next several years. So pretty awesome that 2,500 people signed up. Says that there's a, a need for what we're doing. Oh, definitely a need and, and people are getting better. That's the thing. They're getting better, the reviews are good. We're gonna go over that later, but um, let's get into this round. I'm excited to see if our field work paid off, let's, let's especially, see. especially for you. Yeah, let's see how it works. Roll. All right, hole one, 234, short little guy, downhill. We got guardians all over the place. I'm gonna to try to squeeze this little ringer through the left side gap. I'm gonna go power grip, which is super tough for me. Try to hit this on the Anheuser all the way to the bucket. Oh, barely, go. I was so afraid to hitting that. All right, we'll take it. Okay. That's a tight little gap. That's, right I mean, that's like seven feet. There he is. Oh yeah, nice shot, dude. Oh, buddy. I'll take it. My shot, what we worked on. Oh, you weenie. This might be the only time that I'll ever be in the lead <laughs> against Paul. 
Good birdie, good birdie. And I will take it. Oh, this one is uh, 234 super left. Yeah, it's very far So it's left. tough. I mean, I'm going to throw a sidearm in. I just start it on the ante, let it work its way left. Okay, I'm going to have to try that because that looks cool. What would you throw? A zone. A zone? Okay. Yeah, I didn't put enough ante, but it'll work. Oh, came out a little. Same concept as the backhand though. We want that to go so far left that it burns. Right. Oh, that looked good. Thank you. That was a good putt. I felt good about that. Okay. 253. This one you can't really fit an Anheuser through there because you got guardian trees at the end. So we're just gonna throw, I'm gonna throw a sidearm through there. Buzz. Try to keep it dead straight and maybe drift left a little. Like that. All right, so after kind of all the stuff that you teach in the, the upshot lessons mm -hmm. and landing soft and landing flat, I've been landing five or 10 feet from the basket as opposed to 25, 30 feet from the basket. Yeah. So that lesson is awesome. Really good. Nice. 15 feet, 10 feet. All right, perfect. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm 10 feet away and this is a shot. Normally, before going through that entire upshot lesson, I'd, I'd be 10, 15 feet sure. either, either direction. Makes for easy putts. I mean, putting's a whole lot easier when you're 10 feet away. <laughs> Two, wait, no, this is 309 feet directly downhill, water right behind it. Uh, Tough to land it short. We want to land it a little short and then glide it up, but I'm a little greedy, so I might try to run it. Okay. I'm, I'm going to throw a couple of discs here because this is a fun hole. Very fun hole. Get in. Ugh. Right there, though. Oh. Nice. Very good. Joseph's awesome, huh? Joseph's the coolest. Yeah, he's cool. Guy. I love that dude. He's so fun. Flip, 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 did you see me split that yeah, gap right there? Really good. That better come out cool on camera because that gap was tiny, tight. All right, 249, uphill a little bit. Last Left hole. Left to right, this is our last hole. Out of bounds right. No real trouble left, so. You got some branches up here. I'm gonna th try to like work it high on the Anheuser, start it off on the Anheuser, and then let the stability kind of work it towards the hole. What's your, what are we at? I'm, I'm still even. I'm at six under, I've missed two holes. Okay. I'm happy with even, that's. All right. Should be I. Right. Just slow it down. Okay. Follow through. 
over the back foot. Touch that toe, okay? Nice, go. Split him. Yeah, that's a putt. Right up there. Oh, good try. All right, that's gonna do it for this vlog. Good field work sesh. A nice little quick nine hole round with my buddy. I shot a seven under. Even. Even, very good that. for both of us. I'm very good, yeah. Missed a couple shots, made some really good putts. I putted great today, I felt like. And that's just a little perspective of what I was working on moving right. forward. So I wanted to give you guys an insight on that. Um, didn't really get to work on it that much on this course because it was really tight. Right. Uh, this is more for like the open field type traditional ball golf courses okay. that, that, that we're playing. So that's that's what I'm working on right now. And I feel like it's coming around. I've been doing it for a couple days now. We're going to see how it translates. Cool. But all that stuff we have at the Power Disc Golf Academy. Yep. And you can go there and, and learn it. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to push. You know, I get a lot of uh, questions on when are you going to be home for lessons and all that stuff. I just don't have time for that really right. anymore with my schedule. So I want to push all of you guys who, who talk about that or come up to me, push you over to the Power DG because that's where everything that I would teach in person is going to be over there. We've got like 75 lessons. 75 lessons already. We got about another 30 left. We're, we're talking to other pros that are, are going to come and give their perspectives as well. So it's huge. Um, so by the time we, he publishes this on YouTube, the, we'll already be past our pre-sale. So the price is going to go up to $149, but we are going to launch and uh, do like kind of an official launch sale. So 50% off of your yearly subscription and you get to keep that 50% off the yearly subscription for as long as you keep your subscription current. So if you buy in now, during the official launch yeah. sale, you'll be able to keep that $75 price point for consecutive years. But if you stop for a year and you come back, it's going to go up. Make sure you're getting that price point. A lot of value here. Um, thanks for joining us and uh, hit that subscribe button for me. That goes a long way. Put some comments in there, what you thought about the vlog, and uh, we'll see you down the fairway. Down the fairway. Let's do it.